1975, the Golden State Warriors won the world championship. And yeah, I call it the world championship only because the best talent in the entire world, they're all playing in the NBA. So I feel comfortable, at least with the NBA calling their their champion, the world champion. I digress. In 1975, the Golden State Warriors won the title. Rick Barry was the superstar of that team. He was the finals MVP, but Rick will tell you himself, without Clifford Ray, that team does not win a title. Clifford Ray was fundamental, and he was Dennis Rodman. He was Ben Wallace before they existed. Clifford Ray was a badass player. And he joins us next. He's got a new children's book out. He's going to talk about the Warriors. He's also a big man coach. So his perspective, in my humble opinion, brings a lot of value to it. Let's get into it. This is Locked On Warriors. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts. And, of course, right here on YouTube, if you're watching the show visually, of course, if you're listening, thank you so much for subscribing to one of our podcast channels. My next guest, and by the way, today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NBA. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NBA to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. I am so elated and grateful and happy to have my next guest on the program. He was the starting center for the 1975 world champion Golden State Warriors. My close friend, Rick Barry, he, all he does is speak glowingly about you, sir. Clifford Ray, who has a new book out, is a children's book based on a true story. It's called Big Clifford Ray Saves the Day. It is also your birthday. Happy birthday, sir. How are you doing? And and, and happy birthday. How's life treating you? Life couldn't be better. Uh, Good. You know, I'm blessed to be still walking on this earth. And and I was it was interesting last night. I was sit, sitting in before the game and talking with uh, Dominique Wilkins. And he said, yo, he says, do you realize we're still relevant? <laughs> yes. And I much. thought that was an interesting thing that he said. And so he said, you know, just keep keep spreading the word and teaching. I said, as long as I can move around, I'm going to help the young people. That's what I do. Well, speaking of coaching, uh, you know, Rick always talks about how incredibly successful, efficient you are as a teacher, especially when it comes to big men and coaching. You were on the coaching staff for the 2008 Celtics who won the title. Uh, you know, the, the bigs I think of from that team, Kevin Garnett, Kendrick Perkins, um, you know, Rick, and, and I agree 100 percent, constantly advocates that he wishes you were uh, involved with the Warriors in some regard. Um, and, and which is why in, in, a, in a lot of ways, I felt like you were the perfect guest to bring on because of the tragedy the Warriors are experiencing. I wanted to bring some positivity. I wanted to bring someone on the show who um, could, you know, who, who I think is uplifting. I, I think that's uh, one of the many adjectives that describes you very well. You're a very uplifting, positive person, sir. Um, let's talk about your book before we get into all the, the NBA stuff. Uh, because the book is fascinating in the sense that it's based on a true story. Uh, the year was 1978, the year I was born. Um, you were playing for the Golden State Warriors. And then why don't you take the story away, sir? Marine World Africa USA calls the Warriors, correct? Take it away. Well, uh, you know, it's it's interesting, but I was hurt. And uh, I had just gotten clear to to join the team in Washington and uh, they, they played the, the bullets. And so I was getting ready to head to the airport. Actually, I was on my way to the airport and I got out to, uh, to the airport and someone came up and said, you know, there's a limo out here and they want to take you to, um, they have to take you someplace. And I said, well, I'm supposed to be catching my plane. And they said, the, 
uh, the Warriors knew all about it and it had been approved. We're still going to get you there. Uh, but this is, uh, so anyway, so that's how it all started. And I got in the car and went to, uh, Marine world. And the situation was that there was a dolphin who was their prize show dolphin. His name was Dr. Spock and he had swallowed a boat of all things which didn't surprise me because I'm a fisherman and I understand using lures and all the things that you use to catch fish and everything. So it did not surprise me that he would have been attracted to that silver boat because it looked like a fish. <laughs> and he just swooped down and swooped it up out of the, uh, uh, in the pool because he was in the pool and they was cleaning the pool and that, that boat, vibrated off and it was trickling down the waters deep, you know, so they, he had a chance to get after it and he got after it. <laughs> so, so the now they were all the cleaning. Did the bolt fall off some sort of cleaning equipment? Is that what they said? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. And so then they, so they took him out of the water right away because, you know, a dolphin swims, you know how they swim. Uh, they're quite fast and they swim in this manner where they, you know, like, uh, a, a motion. Uh, if you've ever seen dolphins or whales or uh, killer whales, all of them swim, you know, and they, they got a lot of speed. So anyways, they took him out of the water, put him on a gurney and they, and they have a hospital uh, area where they do all the medical work. And so the, uh, the top uh, animal, um, uh, position Doctor. from the Los Angeles Zoo. I forget his name at this point, but he talked to me over an intercom in the uh, medical facility. And he explained to me what the problem was and what I would experience. And he said, you know, uh, the public relations lady who was, her name was Mary O'Haran. And he said uh, that you had extremely long reach one of the longest reaches in the league uh -huh. in the nba and so i he told me that he undressed me took my shirt off put, put on some scrubs and then the, the sleeve they had cut the sleeve off up at the the shoulder part and they said uh they you know flew my arm and you know all that and and then they told me that, that i would have two minutes to go down his throat through the first stomach and through the second stomach. And that's probably where the vote would be, have have rested. Pass if it didn't get uh, hung up, because it was sharp on the on the point end of it. So it had obviously went down where the sharp point wasn't cutting anything or dishing mm -hmm. anything in it, settled in the second stomach. So and, I and was just able just to enlighten people, Clifford. Retrieve. Dolphins have two stomachs, right? Is that correct? Exactly. Exactly. So when, you're, when you're reaching down and, there, like, uh, is it is it easy to get from the first stomach to the second stomach? Can you feel? Can you navigate easily? Well, you can navigate. You can feel everything that he he walked me through. The, who probably you know, uh, you know services all all the animals especially all the marine animals so he had explained to me what i would what i would feel what it would feel like uh he said you know he won't bite you you know all that stuff so anyway so i basically got in through the first stomach then i uh kind of needed my way through to the second stomach. As soon as they got through the that little cab wall or whatever it was, there was I could feel the boat right away. Well by this wow. time I was almost down to a few seconds before I would have to come back out because I only had so much time. Otherwise I could, you know, choke him to death or, you know, he right. couldn't breathe. And uh so I took the boat and the other thing was I had to turn the boat around and the, where the sharp end was inside of my palm mm -hmm. and when now Makes when sense. i uh, pull it out it won't rip anything because i'm 
protecting it with my paw. And so I, just when the, the doctor said, Coach, you're going to have to try again, I said, I already got it, and I was coming out with the boat. And he had already told me that it that when I – he said, now, when you bring your hand out, totally out, stand to the side because he's going to regurgitate. And sure enough, you know, I turned to the side. By this time, it was hundreds of, of, of reporters. It was like uh -huh. – uh, a blitz, you know, and I didn't really uh, know all this, but anyway, so that's what happened. And so all these guys that were real nose, you're not some reporters, they like right in there on top of it, you know, that's their thing. And one of the guys, I don't remember which one it was, you know, he was almost had his nose down on the, he was closer <laughs> to it than I was. And so when, the, when, the, when, the, uh, when I pulled the boat out, he just, everybody who was not where they should have been, where they shouldn't have been. They got a little bit of the, the regurgitation. So I oh. I got a kick out of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. and, it's, it, and the thing is that this happened back in 78, way before social media and any of that. So I feel like if this happened in, in a more modern era, everyone would know about it. And there are a lot of like press clippings from that event. I mean, it, it, this is a story of lore. Um, and, and I love the fact that you recently have come out, and I'm going to share this if you're watching this on the on the, the YouTube side. Uh, you wrote a children's book, and it's called B Big Clifford Ray Saves the Day. Uh, and again, I, I can't think of a, a better book to read for a child. I think especially with the ending, the whole story is so unique. I love the fact that it's based on a true story. Um, and so all people have to do if they want to find that link. I mean, A, you can search... Uh, for the title, it's called Big Clifford Ray Saves the Day. Um, or uh, you can go to your Instagram page at Big Clifford Ray underscore 44, reflecting your playing number. Uh, the link is there as well. So those are the two ways people can find uh, uh, your book. Um, and, uh, you know, it's if it's a kid's birthday, if it's for your own child, whatever it is, uh, whatever the reasoning is, it, it sounds like a fantastic title. Uh, bravo on that. All right, let's give some love to our first sponsor of the day or evening, depending on when you're watching this, and that's LinkedIn. At the start of the new year, every small business owner is asking themselves the same question. What's the one move I can make that'll take my business to the next level in 2024? LinkedIn Jobs knows that your success all depends on the team you surround yourself with. That's why LinkedIn Jobs has created the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. And look, I always tell my students as a professor that if you're not on LinkedIn, you're missing out. The headhunters are there. O over a billion people have registered and used LinkedIn. A billion, that's a pretty big number. And they also know that if, they, if a business owner or an entrepreneur, if they wanna find the best talent they're going to look for it with LinkedIn. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NBA. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. You are locked on Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I, I, I want really to tell you a yeah, funny story it. about that, and then uh, we can move on. But I was—I am uh, a spokesperson for Duke Cancer, uh, prostate cancer, and also uh, my best friend Donna Bernstein, who's like my sister. We went to school together. We've been knowing each other fifty something years, and she donated three hundred thousand to my. Uh, prostate foundation in Duke's in my honor at Duke. So I'm the spokesperson. And so we had the 75th uh, gala cancer gala at Duke and coach Krzyzewski and I were there uh, and, um, along with a lot of other people, but the, there were a uh, hundred, I think uh, 50 or a hundred, um, you know, people, uh, what do you call them? 
uh, the com- you know, they're on the committee. They're like the big wigs of doctors okay. and famous the people board. that in the med- <laughs> medical. So they're on the board. It's like 50 or 100 people on the board. All of them bought a book. And they all bought the book to the gala for me to sign. And the one, one of the, the the head guy who had left, um, uh, he left uh, the hospital of uh, uh, St. Jude's. Uh, he was the head man there, and he now is at at Duke, running Duke cancer. And so they told me, and they said, "Do you realize?" That you're probably the only person in the world who's experienced anything like this. He said, yeah. this is really kind of a, a unique, special thing. And there are a lot of people who love dolphins. And then not to mention how many people whose parent, uh, loved one, uh, wife, husband, who's had breast cancer or prostate cancer. So I, this was my way of being able to give back. And so this is what prompted me to write this book and uh so it's Probably. just been a great thing and i i'm glad i did it and you know i just hope uh everybody gets the joy out of it that i that i've seen people in their uh, comments and they send pictures they they they've even actually are uh, sending books to my house uh for me to sign and i do i sign them and i send them right back <laughs> and then uh, it's just been a great uh, fun thing. And I just, uh, I would love to, uh, I actually, I'm going to do a book signing at the Black History Museum in Oakland on the 26th of uh, next month. Of February. February. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. Well, we'll, we'll stay in touch and I'll, I'll be, I'll uh, definitely promote that as the day gets closer. So uh, people are yeah. aware um, I might even try to make it myself and maybe you can autograph a copy for me too. That would be awesome. Oh, no um, question. No oh, question. beautiful, beautiful. And again, the book is called Big Clifford Ray Saves the Day. Uh, yep. I, I look, I, I talked to Rick a lot about this and, and other players who have played in eras before the money has is at this level where players are making tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars. So anything that that a player from your era is doing to make some cash, I support it because you are grossly underpaid, and it just sucks. I don't know if you feel that way. I, I, do, do, do you, is there any resentment from you in terms of the money that you made then versus seeing what they make now? Well, first of all, when I went to the University of Oklahoma and realized what the system was all really about, because I was from a really small town in Union, mm-hmm. South Carolina. I went to Sims High, which is uh, like a small community in uh right outside of spartanburg and i didn't i went to school because my mother and father didn't have my they didn't have a chance well my dad did but my mother did not have an opportunity to go to school because my brother and i was the firstborns and so they just went to work raising their children and Mm -hmm. so it was our responsibility as sisters and brothers we sat around at the table and we said, somebody got to go to college because mom and dad are so, you know, education oriented. Mm-hmm. And they that's all they ever, my dad didn't even want us to play sports until we were like a, a junior, a sophomore, organized. We could play basketball, play a football, whatever, but not on a team. He said he didn't right. want to raise any dummies. So <laughs> we wound up, <laughs> so we wound, I wound up playing probably my sophomore, junior year, I guess it was. And uh, so when I got to the University of Oklahoma, you know, I realized right away that it wasn't what they said it was because they said, you're going to be the first freshman to play at the at, at the Division One basketball. And I didn't know what they were talking about. Well, later on, as I got to school, I realized that you couldn't play as a freshman. Which I had, nobody could explain to me why somebody would make such a rule. Right. Why? And, why was that a rule? Do you know? Go ahead. Huh? Well, why, why was that a rule? I mean, I, I clearly that's not a rule now, but why was that a rule then? Well, I'm just going to be honest with you. I think yeah. that it's at the one. time, I thought that they did a lot of things, and I thought that one of the reasons they did a lot of things was. 
They took, remember, they took out the duck. You couldn't That's dunk in college ball. Now, That's crazy. You, you know you what I know. Like, you and you enlightened me to that some years ago. I, I had yeah. no idea that 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 level of racism existed. Even though I mean, look, it's it wasn't. So... It, 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 let's let's no, you know. Here's the thing. It okay. wasn't racism. It was a situation where people was trying to figure out how can we. Well, first of all, they they were trying to get comfortable with black athletes going to major colleges. I, I wanted to go to Duke. I wanted to go to Carolina or Georgia Tech or uh, North Carolina. But at that particular point in time, they weren't. You were going to have to go to a junior college before you could go there because they didn't, didn't want to get a black black athlete, and then he didn't do well or he couldn't mm -hmm. get, do the work or the schoolwork or whatever. So it was a real time, hard time for athletes and i'll tell you an interesting story i got scholarships to all the black colleges and so when i went to two or three of the colleges one of the guys in particular that i remember his name was big house game and he told me he said we want you he said i want you in the worst way he said but i'm just going to be quite honest with you you need to go to a division one school and a division one white school he said, because you can help our people mm. by being successful. If you're successful, it's going to open the doors for a lot of other young minority or different cultures, by whether it be Chinese uh, or whatever. So it's not, so, it wasn't so much of a, of a racist issue. It was just an issue of fear. People are afraid of things that are different or yeah, people yeah, are afraid yeah. of, of something. Like if someone is good at something, you know, like if you can jump out the gym, everybody else is thinking, well, why can't my kid jump out the gym? Well, maybe your kid what, didn't do some of the things that we, we did as, as young people growing up. Right. Like climbing right. trees and 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 swinging on vines across the gullies and doing things that you probably could have broke your neck or broke your arm or whatever, but it made us more athletic. It gave us more uh, development. All those things that a lot of kids don't do because most parents are very protective of their children. Mm -hmm. We and were you, brought and, up. Go ahead. And you brought up the cream thing because, uh, and again, I didn't. I. I Call a naivety, whatever it was. I, I missed this and and never learned this until you brought this up in some years back when we were chatting that uh, they blocked dunks. The NCAA banned dunks. And is that how Kareem developed the skyhook, or did he have the skyhook before that? I I, I, I don't think remember he had that the skyhook before that. Okay, okay, he did. Okay, but you know that is crazy. Yeah, that they I, I just, dunks. That's wild. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, you got a technical foul. That's you know, crazy. if you did, and uh, and and so. I just felt like that it was a situation to where it slowed the process. And it also helped us because we were able to learn other things too. So I didn't think, it, you know, I just wanted them to be honest about it. Like I, if they, if we weren't going to play, if I wasn't going to play as a freshman, I needed to know. It. And I didn't feel I knew about it. So now I'm got an attitude. And then that hurt <laughs> me because, I'm in college, and now they think I'm a uh, I'm a player that has an attitude, so they don't feel like that they can win. Because I remember reading Streets and Smith with Marty Marty Blake or Marty whatever his name was. He was a writer, and he always had a thing about he rated all the fives, fours, threes, twos, and point guards. And I remember this as distinctly as yesterday. I read about myself, and it said, "Oh, you." perhaps could be uh you know competitive in the big eight depending on the on the attitude of the young center clifford ray so it made it like i had a bad attitude which i did not no but i didn't like people to not tell me the truth about things because right. if i tell, told you when i told them i was going to come to the university of oklahoma i came to the university of oklahoma i didn't go anywhere yep. so and when I didn't like things at the University of Oklahoma, I did not leave the University of Oklahoma. I stayed and worked through it and helped them grow as people. 
and they help me grow as people. And that's what you have to understand about, you know, we got to get away from racism and this and that and all that and just start looking at us as a, a, a people. You mm -hmm. know, we, we have to make this world better. I know that won't happen in my lifetime and probably in your lifetime, but our children, allowing our children to grow. And that mm -hmm. was one of the things that I, I tell people all the time. I admire and love Julian Bond and Martin Luther King and all the great uh, men, black and white, who helped bring our country together as a as a country, not as a black community, a white community, a Chinese community, a Spanish community, or whatever. You know, mm -hmm. we have to get to that point again. We've lost that a little bit. And so that was my whole take on on it when I was at at the college. I was always saying those things and I would say, hey, look, you know, we need to feel like that we can belong. I did not like the way the NCAA handled things from the standpoint that if you go to the university, you should feel like a student, mm -hmm. like all the other students. You don't have to give me a bag full of brown paper bag full of money. How about buying uh, two or three sport coats that say University of Oklahoma's student athlete? If they would have done all those things, we would not have the portal going on and million dollar contracts and all this stuff that's going on that's just going to deteriorate the whole program mm -hmm. that they worked to build all these years. But people will always go to sporting events because it's an outlet for people. It's an outlet for the world. Yeah, Sports has been a part of the world even before it was real football. Before that, it was gladiators and all kinds oh, of other yeah. things. Yep. It's, we, yep. we as so, humans need it. I, I, I'm totally with you on that. It, it's been a part of our, our genome as far back as civilization started. You're absolutely right. I, I, I'm with you. And I'm also with you in terms of the value of transparency i i feel like it's there's never enough of that in this world to just be honest just to be forthright yeah. just you know it, it's yeah. i'm with you i'm 100 with you on that this is a crazy world and life isn't always easy things can happen that raise your anxiety that maybe give you depression that just maybe puts you in a place where you need help and your brain is an organ that sometimes needs healing, that sometimes needs professional help. And one of the resources available for everyone out there is better help. That's what today's episode is brought to you by, BetterHelp. Give online therapy a try at betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA and get on your way to being your best self. And with BetterHelp, one of the many facets that makes it convenient and a much easier process than you may otherwise find seeking mental help is it's virtual. You don't have to spend money on gas. You don't have to waste time with the commute. It's from the comfort of your home, which may in turn make you feel more comfortable talking to your therapist. And speaking of therapists, there's a good possibility that the first therapist you find in their process is not a right fit, is not right for you. And that's okay. With BetterHelp, you can seek a second therapist, a third therapist. You can seek out someone that you feel comfortable with, who feels like a great match for you, and get on, take that step toward healing the most important organ in your body. And I hope none of you ever let stigmas get in the way. I'm a huge advocate for, for feeling comfortable, being okay, seeking mental health. And that includes seeking out a therapist with BetterHelp. Celebrate the progress you've made. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA today to get $10 off your first month. I apologize to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com slash locked on NBA. And today's episode is also brought to you by FanDuel. I'm getting a smile on my face just talking about FanDuel because every time I think about FanDuel, I think about betting on the 49ers. And we're in the postseason right now. There's no better time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book right now. 
New customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. doesn't matter if you win or lose. That's the best part. Just place a $5 bet. Hopefully you win that $5 bet so you can get more than $150. But no matter what happens, you get $150 in bonus bets. And I love betting on all sports. I cannot wait for that day when FanDuel is legal for us folks here in California because I would have loved having some action on that uh, uh, Niners-Packers game. What a thriller that was. What a nerve-wracking riot that was. And for anyone who bet with FanDuel and won money this weekend, congratulations to you. And for everyone else, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. If you don't mind talking, uh, switching gears and talking about the Warriors real fast, just because mm-hmm. we haven't had a show, we haven't had a show in a few days, mainly because the, the team has experienced this untimely tragedy. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm curious, did you did you yourself were you familiar with uh, former assistant coach uh, Dayan Milojevic? Like, did you know him personally? And what are your thoughts on the team experiencing just, something like this? Because this exactly exactly what the players have spoken about him. He's just an outstanding young man, and he was tireless the way I am, tireless teacher, always wanting to help the young people improve or accomplish. Like, you know, he he's, I'm, I didn't know him personally, but I've talked with him whenever mm-hmm. we were uh, uh, brought out to do some type of appearance for the Warriors. So we got to rub shoulders with all those guys, including Coach Kerr and all the brass people, you know, the Lakeums and uh, Peter Gubin, all those people we met. And everybody, you know, uh, have been just great. I think they've been good. I think it got to look crazy probably the first championship because – they wanted so much for that to be their legacy that you got to remember sports is as much current as it is history. And True. so someone deserves to pass the torch. If someone carried you for how many ever years that it, it went, we were the only champion for all those years. 40. And then all of a sudden, here comes Clay and Curry, the Smash <laughs> Brothers. And then they, uh, you know, Bob, all these people that work tirelessly with the Warrior organization, Mr. Guberman and, and Lakeham and all those guys, they put a team together and they were able to win the first championship. So the only thing I thought they should have done a little bit different would have been is to allow that 75 championship team to pass the torch to those young guys in, in some fashion or the mm-hmm. other. And other than that, I have no complaints about the of course. So pr- I'm so proud of those guys. I think they, they are to be commended. I think that the organization has done a wonderful job, a great job. And, and uh, I, I think that everybody grows, you don't, you know, like now there's a big push to have players come to games and, and they actually pay it. Like when I went to Chicago, they actually paid me to come to the game, uh, you know, which is a way to give back to guys mm-hmm. that, that help, help give credibility to the league, to the NBA when it was much needed. So when the Warriors won the championship in Oakland. That was a tremendous thing for the Bay Area. You know, definitely uplifting in the Bay Area because Oakland is a town that I feel a compassion to because it was my opportunity to shine. And so I was telling the guy the other day that I'm going to, I want to do something that can leave that all the guys who started their play in Oakland now that all those teams are gone, I think we should do something to put in that 
Black History Museum in Oakland to have a sports exhibit that 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 the young kids can go and and look up what Reggie Jackson did or look up what by the blue all these different players in baseball, football, basketball. And that would be a great thing, a great shot in the arm arm for Oakland because I just think that Oakland is a beautiful town and I hope at some point that it continues to grow even with the setbacks that they've had. Yeah. And it is, I think think it's, it's I think it's up to the people to make it better. I wholeheartedly agree. And and I think uh, speaking about uh, Joe Lacob and Peter Gruber, uh, I think it's awesome that they're going to bring a WNBA franchise to Oakland. Um, So at least there's something there again. I mean, every, every pro team is, has bailed on that city, which is crazy. Um, I mean, the A's are about to leave, Raiders left, Warriors moved across the bay. It is, it is wild. I love Clifford Ray. He is class personified. And 30 minutes just was not enough. So we made this a two-parter. Stay tuned for part two. We're talking a lot more Warriors in part two. As someone who works with the bigs for the Cleveland Cavaliers, yes, I'm going to pick Clifford Ray's brain in regards to whether or not the Warriors can possibly make a move for a player like Jared Allen, someone who I absolutely love. He's number one on my wish list. So we'll get into that. And his Hall of Fame teammate with the 75 World Champion Warriors makes a surprise appearance in part two. So stay tuned for that and so much more. Clifford Ray, yours truly, and a dash of an NBA Hall of Famer in part two.